Hello, and welcome aboard Whale Pod to the Paradox Poachers Violet Edition episode. I'm your Captain Whale, and before this episode is over, we will have all the future Paradox Pokemon in our possession. Now, let's start off here with bringing a little bit of the Thunder Wave, that is. Now that we brought the Zap Zap, we will have easier an easier time catching this thing. Let's hope this doesn't KO it. Very close, but we are in the clear. Now, to help us whittle it down to absolutely low as possible, we have Cerule Edge featuring False Swipe. Sucker. Granted, that still would have been resisted by Kilowattril. Pretty sure that is one HP. So let's start hucking some balls at it. We'll show the first three, and then if it breaks out of all of those, we'll be back when we catch it. That is two out of three thrown. Nope, not battle. We're gonna try another Dusk Ball. And we'll be back when we catch it. And we got it in a non-critical capture in a Luxury Ball. Now, let's learn a little bit more about this thing. Iron Valiant, Paradox Pokemon, Fairy and Fighting type, four foot seven inches tall, weighs 77.2 pounds, it is possible that this is the object listed as Iron Valiant in a certain expedition journal. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, Violet has the lame entries for the future paradoxes, just like Scarlet has the lame entries for the past paradoxes. No, we won't give it a nickname, and we'll send it straight to the boxes. I would say we'll be back when we're at our next Paradox Mon location. But not only is there just another Iron Valiant wandering around down here now, we also... We're gonna patch up Kill uh, uh, Kilowattril and Cerule Edge here. We can also find Iron Jugulus here in this cave. So let's get ourselves some Juguli on going here. Or going on here. And bring a little thunder on it. But we're not going to Volt Switch this time because, well... It is weak to Electric and that will one-shot it. We're going to see how it likes a taste of its own medicine. I do believe this thing will still have a Hydrogen's catch rate, so it's going to be a pretty low catch rate for this one as well. Not as low as the uh, Iron Valiant as... Iron Valiant and Roaring Moon have the same catch rate as sub-legendaries do. Well, how rude of you. That is not quite 1 HP. I was wondering why my special attack wasn't getting nerfed there, but then I remember I'm holding the clear amulet. So it's not gonna lower there. One thing we are gonna do is we're going to patch up our Cerule Edge. And it's paralyzed. That's exactly when we needed it. Luxury Ball, go. Nope. A luxury Ball, again. Nope. It does not affect me, sucker. 
Nope, not battle. Last luxury ball, go. And we get it on the third luxury ball. Uh, that last one on the Iron Valley was about the 10th or 11th total ball. Uh, speaking of Iron Valley, another one spawned in while we were fighting. Iron Jugulus, Paradox Pokemon Dark and Flying. It's possible that Iron Jugulus is an object described in an old book. Uh, may actually be this Pokemon. 4 foot 3 inches tall, 244.7 pounds. No nickname for the strictly worst Hydrogen. And straight to the boxes with you. Two down. A Sableye has a death wish now, huh? I have fulfilled its wish. I am a most benevolent Pokemon trainer indeed for that. Man, lots of Iron Valiants running around here right now. Two of those things spawned in while we were catching a Jugulus there. While we were going for the Jugulusler. We're going to patch him up. I think I'm also going to switch Cerule Edge into the lead. Because we do have three Mons that are uh, not able to be paralyzed among the Violet Paradoxes. We're going to head back up. We'll come back for an Iron Bundle. Those are... Not something we want to have a Cerule Edge in the front slot for. Mint condition mint right there. And an Aerial Ace TM. There's what we're looking for. Hey, Hariyama. Hariyama, you doing? We're gonna whittle it down quicker with a brick break here. It's gonna whittle itself down. That could be a problem. be really nice to have a ground type on the team right about now. We can't afford the luxury here, so we're gonna go for a timer. Or... I still don't know if the Dusk Ball works in Area Zero, if it's like nighttime outside Area Zero. Boom, there's our uh, sumo wrestler. Now, Iron Hands is the Paradox Pokemon fighting an electric type. A very bad coloration for the hands right there. I can't tell what height it is. I want to say maybe 4-1 or 5-1. But it is 839.3 pounds. This Pokemon shares many similarities with Iron Hands, an object mentioned in a certain expedition journal. get to the boxes. Yeah, that wild charge was going to prove quite uh, frustrating for the false swipe strats there. Uh, Surreal Edge needs more pick-me-ups here. I swear, that Pokemon. Taking all the beatings and never giving me anything in return. Iron Thorns is the... Uh, Sandy Shocks of, of Violet spawns only in the rocky areas that are outside of caves. We're going to whittle it down quickly here. There's another one right by us if we do KO accidentally. Sandstorm. What a terrible song. Whittle it down. Haha! -ha, keep sandstorming it up there, Titar. Ha 
Good enough. You should be one HP with that. The storm's done more damage to me than the T-Tar. We have the luxury this time. Nope. We do not have the luxury. I'm, I am kidding on that. Well, that is one in the fails column. Fortunately for us, uh, there is another T-Tar right there. All right, play nice this time, T-Tar. Or I'm gonna have to tell uh, a certain uh, Poketuber who uses your namesake that you're acting up for me. Please do not wild charge here. Ultra. Ah, oh, so close. Anything but wild charge is fine with me, T-Tar. It just, you know, compounds the problem when both the electric types are physical attackers, so you just know they're gonna have wild charge. Second ball, I got him. Iron Thorns. Well, technically third ball if you count the one luxury ball we wasted on the first one. It is the Paradox Pokemon, Rock and Electric, five foot three inches, weight 668 pounds. So I don't know, maybe the the Iron Hands is supposed to be four foot one. Some of its notable features match those of an object named within a certain expedition journal as Iron Thorns. Would we like to give Iron Thorns a nickname? No, we would not. And we'll send him to the boxes. We just need Iron Moth, Iron Bundle, and Iron Treads. Iron Moth is usually going to be found towards the higher elevations of Area Zero. So let's, uh, get that amazing angle on Maridon as we climb up this slope here. Hey, Perigraph. You're a lot, well, slower than I expected you to be. I thought you were going to be like a super fast sweeper because, you know, Giraffe Rig, your baby form, is a super fast sweeper. So why can't you be one, huh? Huh? You, th you think you're too good to be a sweeper for a giraffe? Sorry, just my residual dislike of anything Giraffe Rig. There's an Iron Moth. This thing's gonna be a little brutal. Oh, we didn't heal up our Cerule Edge. That's, that's not good. We're gonna go into the kill a Watchroll here. Hopefully it does not kill our Watchroll. Haha! -ha! You suck, Iron Moth. And I mean that in the uh, you're bad at the game way, not that you're too good at the game way, so I hate you for it. Now take that paralysis and, and like it. You suck even more. You know what? We're going to take advantage of it being stupid and max potion Cerule Edge right now. Aha! You extra suck. Well, you're finally learning. If that's a discharge, it's gonna hurt. Otherwise, we're gonna get a flash fire boost. Good 
couldn't move because it's paralyzed. Way to go. Way to be bad at the game, Iron Moth. One HP now. Eh, not as bad as I thought it was going to be. We do have the luxury here. Nope. It did not work. And we get it on the second luxury ball. I've noticed a trend where if it breaks out right away, throw the same type of ball again, and I usually get it. Cerule Edge is now level 75. The Paradox Pokemon Fire and Poison, 3 foot 11 inches, 79.4 pounds. No records exist of this species being caught. Data is lacking, but the Pokemon's traits match up with an object described in an old book. Would, would we like to give Iron Moth a nickname? As per usual, no, we will not, and we will send him straight to the boxes, where he will rot forever. Because I only have Pokemon that are good at the game on my teams. Now, we could go for the Iron Bundle right here. And yeah, actually, we're going to go for the Iron Bundle that's right there. It's even holding booster energy. Speed was heightened, eh? Uh, please don't be going for an Ice Beam. Ice Beam, of course you were, you little turd. We're gonna make what's known as a strategic retreat here. We're gonna bring out... Reverum. Actually, no, we're gonna go for the catch here. We eat those all day. And Iron Bundle is now gonna get a Luxury Ball to the face. We eat those all day too, Iron Bundle. Luxury Ball number two to the face. And a nice angle of our Rev Room there. And we get it on the third Luxury Ball. Gotcha, Iron Bundle was cut. Oh, I know what I could have done for at least Iron Hands. Kilowattril uh, doesn't take, uh, doesn't take damage from electric type moves, so it could never actually KO itself with the uh, Wild Charge if I wanted to go for a, a Luxury Ball Iron Hands. Iron Bundle is the Ice and Water Paradox Pokemon. It resembles a mysterious object mentioned in an old book. There are only two reported sightings of this Pokemon. It is a flat two feet tall and weighs 24.3 pounds. No nickname for him, too. Uh, his people have committed too many crimes against me in order to uh, get any sort of name, and we will send our derpy-looking stupid robot penguin, uh, the strictly colder cousin of the robot chicken, to the boxes. Let's go ahead and just normal revive, even though we have way more max revives than you could ever need in a Pokemon game. I'm going to say it's a little weird how you can't have revives be used as part of an auto heal. If you try to auto heal a fainted Pokemon, it will say revive at first. Like, dude, I have revives in my inventory. Just use the revive as part of the auto heal. Now... For our last Paradox encounter, we must go into the caves once more. Geronimo! Down through the fog into the cave system below. Let's try and land on the bridges here.
more cursed penguin dolls here. Iron hands. Ghost Terra Shards. There was a while when I was trying to get up to 50 Terra Shards of the Ghost type. So I could actually just change the, uh... The Terra type of a... Uh, of a Rock Terra type Knackle Stack into Ghost type. Rather than trying to get... A specimen of the Static Overworld Encounter Ghost Terra type that has the correct ability, that being Purifying Salt. I wonder if we have to go out of the water in order to find this thing. All those Glamora just uh, glamouring around all over the place like they don't have something to do with the Terrassal phenomenon. They totally do. And that's probably the main reason why it was chosen for Gita's Ace, even though it is not Ace Pokemon material. No, we are not down here just looking for crap. We are down here looking for a very specific Pokemon that, I don't know, maybe doesn't spawn down right in the water. Pretty sure it spawns in these cave areas as opposed to out in the field because its scarlet counterpart spawns in the caves. Ah yes, there you are, Iron Treads. We cannot inflict you with paralysis, so it's gonna uh, get stuck in here. And of course, both Brick Break and Bitter Blade are super effective, so we gotta chip away at it here. You know what we're gonna do here? We're gonna reduce how often we need to use a potion on Cerule Legend, just X defense up here. I'm boosting sharply here. That'll allow us to survive that stomping tantrum. And heal up our Cerule Edge. Ah, don't knock it off. Or do knock it off. Let me, uh, let me false swipe you better. Just, you know, stop fighting and let me catch you, Iron Treads. As simple as that. Now you should be 1 HP or pretty darn close. Luxury Ball time. First Luxury Ball got Iron Treads. Uh, so close to a level up for Garganical there. Iron Treads, the Paradox Pokemon is ground and steel, 2 feet 11 inches tall. 
uh, 529.1 pounds. Ground steel type. Sightings of this Pokemon have occurred in recent years. It resembles a, a mysterious object described in an old expedition journal. We will send him to his box. Now, there is only one final Paradox Pokemon to find within the deepest recesses of Area Zero. And since I'm feeling lazy, we're going to go the lazy way about catching him. Besides, the ball I'm going to use is going to fit perfectly with his coloration. And that is Maridon. No need to throw down a hard save. You want to know why? Well, you'll find out soon. There's our thumbnail shot. Well, why is our Maridon uh, going to be easy to catch? Because he just left the confines of one Master Ball to find himself uh, cooped up inside another. I do feel like the purple coloration of the Master Ball goes very nicely with our violet uh, lizard bike here. Our very violent violet lizard bike. Critical capture on the Master Ball. Gotcha, Maridon was caught. As I said, we were feeling lazy, so we took the lazy way to catch an R. Big lizard boy. Paradox Pokemon, Electric Dragon. 11 foot 6 inches tall, 529.1 pounds. This seems to be the Iron Serpent mentioned in an old book. The Iron Serpent is said to have turned the land to ash with its lightning. Well, uh, as your crime for turning the land to a very low quality anime protagonist with your lightning, you are getting sent to a box. Bad Maridon. Bad Maridon. No Ash Ketchums allowed. And we now have both lizards. And with that, thank you all for watching Whale Pod. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And as always, please do remember to like, comment, and sub to the channel if you have not done so already. Now, with that said and done, I hope you all are having fantastic days, Whale Pod. Make sure to stay cool. Stay classy, and most importantly, stay healthy. But until next time, this is Captain Whale, signing off.